So this is not going to be a video on how aeronautical decision making can be applied to mental health, although that can be helpful sometimes, and I am going to sort of touch on it. What this is primarily going to be about, hopefully it won't be too long, is how the FAA deals with mental health and how that does kind of reflect how society currently deals with it more broadly. Because the FAA has some rather backwards incentives with regards to mental health treatment, and this has become a fairly ubiquitous problem. Some parts of society do better than others. But the FAA kind of incentivizes you against any getting any sort of help. And this was something that early on when I started to really have problems at the beginning of graduate school that I was very reluctant to even see a therapist out of fear that I would lose my medical certificate. And I did end up losing my medical certificate, not because of just seeing a therapist. The most immediate cause was because I started hormone replacement therapy and the interaction between that and the FAA has been a big part of my mental health journey. And I've already griped about how they make it difficult if you're on hormones to fly. I've been off hormones for a while, in part because I wanted to get back to flying and I didn't see any other way at the time. But now I've had so many other struggles that it would be challenging. Because now I have regular medication and the FAA will only approve mental health medications if they're on a very specific list and if you get quite a bit of additional testing. And I've said before that the only practical way to do that is if your employer is willing to pay for it, if you're working for an airline and they really want to keep you and they're willing to foot the bill for it. And the airline industry is infamously volatile. That's part of why the pilots unions have sort of such strict requirements that to some extent prevent the airlines from just ousting people arbitrarily have to have hiring freezes before they have layoffs, etc., etc. But people, generally speaking, have incentives to just hide their problems, not get treatment, let things get worse and worse, because as soon as you do get treatment, you will get basically removed from flight status, which for most people will tremendously worsen their mental well-being and their overall ability to do things in life. That's particularly true if flying is your career, but it's even true if it's just a hobby. Um, it's a hobby that's a tremendous privilege, so I don't want to act like the inability to fly an airplane is, you know, some huge psychological burden. But it is just that one extra little kick when you're down, you know. And it seems like there's a lot of things like that. It's been changing. There's more and more of a concern with people's mental well-being. Unfortunately, a lot of that is just because you know, when people completely burn out, they're completely unproductive and, you know, employers amongst other organizations have finally realized that, you know, maybe it's worth, you know, having some basic steps to ensure people's mental well-being so that they can continue to remain productive. Now, I don't want that to be the only or even the main reason that we as a society care about mental health and everybody's psychological well-being, but it's the interaction with 
productivity and employment is always going to be a deep one, or at least for the foreseeable future. And there's finally been a recognition that you can't just have everybody bury their problems and take any indica indication of somebody feeling unwell as some defect in them rather than it being, you know, a combination of stress and, you know, everybody dealing with it a little bit differently. Because it's not like, you know, human nature has changed drastically in the last, you know, few decades or even centuries. But nonetheless, people have been having more and more of these problems. And it's because, you know, the demands that are psychologically placed on us have gotten so much more... I don't want to say unbearable, but difficult to bear and taxing on our cognitive, emotional capacities. Because I have burned out pretty hard several times. First, at the end of graduate school. Well, first at the beginning of graduate school actually because I was doing an internship and I burned out but I just kept going I didn't even feel comfortable telling anybody I was feeling unwell except my partner at the time and they did the best they could but they didn't really know how to deal with it and it took me a long time after that and some unfortunate things that I'm not going to get into now some of which I actually do bear the responsibility for, but my mental well-being went into absolutely terrible status, and I at least started therapy maybe a couple years-ish into graduate school. Yeah, about two years in. But then, you know, another four or five-ish years later, at the end of graduate school, I burned out to the point of not just like anxiety and depression because you really shouldn't just push through anxiety and depression i mean depression to some extent you sh do need to sometimes just you know push through but you know not for the sake of productivity but for the sake of your own well-being i mean it's if you just bury those things long enough other things that are much worse can happen and in my case i got manic and to some degree psychotic even and i ended up just unable to function at all because you can push through anxiety and depression you can you know you can at least i can you know even if i'm feeling depressed and don't want to get out of bed i can make myself get up and do stuff and even if I'm feeling anxious, you know, I can do some deep breathing, go get a little bit of exercise, and calm down enough to try to do things. But mania, psychosis, there's nothing I can do. Um, you know, it's not like I, and this is where mental health stigma comes into effect of me thinking that I even would. It's like, it's not like I was totally out of control, like, you know, doing anything re reckless, but I was just talking to myself and believed a bunch of, you know, conspiratorial things that, you know, everybody was possessed with demons or whatever and was out to get me. And there's just no way to function through that. It's it's just impossible. Uh, and it, you, you shouldn't be. At that point, your priority should not be still trying to be productive. And people around me, fortunately, did not, you know, they don't want to say they all responded like angels, but they did at least help me get back to some semblance of functionality but then I unfortunately sort of was too eager too fast again to get back to that productivity to just hide it away again and go you know oh you know the best thing for me will be to just you know get back to producing work output and I went and did a postdoc and it wasn't a complete disaster 
but by the end of a one-year postdoc, I was worn down, anxiety and depression again. This time I knew the signs and I opted not to renew my contract for fear that I would slip back into mania. And I did. But at least I wasn't working at a, you know, national laboratory when I did. And I, to large measure, started this YouTube project at the encouragement of my uh, roommate at the end of graduate school, so from before my postdoc. And it's because I just kind of, he and I would have very lengthy conversations, and but also because I would just sort of talk to myself so much, and he was actually really, like, cool about it. Um, you know. But, you know, from a, mostly actually from the discussions we would have, but also from the fact that I clearly had so much to say, he said, oh, you should just, you know, put it on the internet, and it's kind of why this started. I've since sort of been trying to focus more on things I feel I have expertise in, but this has always also remained an important outlet for me just talking about mental health and I don't know I think I've sort of settled into doing a video every couple of weeks but if there's ever a choice between my mental health and that output I am very actually rigid about I will prioritize my mental health and that's partially why I've settled here on, you know, every third video will be a vlog, every third video will be physics, and every third video will be aviation. So that way, it's not particularly stressful, and I think that would be a good thing to stick to. But yeah, I feel like the world should uh, take more lessons from my roommate and uh, fewer from the FAA with regards to uh, how we treat mental health. So, uh, yeah, peace.